Right, so to start off with, um, we need, you, you're going to need a couple of bats. You only use one, but you need two to start off with, if that makes sense. <laughs> Got some sand. Got a tub of some water and a paper. How many sand is that? Just sand, that's just kiln sand. So there's a bit of white molecule sand in there. It could be any sand you want. The sand isn't important, it's just there for a supporting thing. Uh, a board with a bit of canvas. We've got some of these. This isn't necessarily essential to do this. Um, if you've got a nice workbench set up in your studio and you've covered it in canvas, that's absolutely fine to do, to do the same thing. Um, but to start off with, we need to make a base. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to start the pot upside down. Does that make sense? It will do in a minute. So we're just going to quickly make... Now you could extrude these coils, I'm not sure how big our, but definitely this first one you could extrude. Might have actually gone a bit thin there. Well, this, this first one is different to the other coils that you're going to make. So this coil, this, this coil that I'm going to do now is, is actually going to be the foot rim. Yeah. Um, and it's slightly different to the other coils. Oh, sorry. Now this clay is very soft. So I've just used a bit of bandsaw blade just to score it up. A little bit of water on there because this is so so soft we can probably get away with it a bit more. Slight angle. Still too long. Should have moved this over here. Yeah. Now I'm just gonna. You probably won't see this particularly well from where you are. I'm just making sure that that coil is joined really well on the inside. I might have to uh, follow Benny's hot air gun again a little bit. One of the tools I've forgotten to get is the little wooden paddle that we use. There. Try and do this in record time, so I don't have to do so much editing on the on the uh, YouTube.
you can spend a little bit more time than me doing this. But this this Ashraf Hannah clay was when he originally designed it was for um, for raccooning, but he also happened in his wisdom or accidentally or whatever, and he still uses this body now to produce a really beautiful hand building clay. So it's really it's really suitable for making these large ashes. You've all seen his work. How delicate you yeah. can make it, how large you can make it. You know, this all uses exactly the same clay every time he's doing it. It's started to develop a, a, another black body now, I think, as well. But this is his classic. So we've got a little almost ashtray type thing. So this is actually the base of my pot. So once I've done this, you get some sand. Gonna fill it up with a bit of sand. Again with your other bat. Ah. You're gonna do it's like almost like a Spanish omelette effect. <laughs> We've now got a really nice foot ring. Got a bit of the sand that's come out of the edge. And a solid base to start on. Mm -hmm. So now comes to the coils. Now, again, this isn't a technique that I've actually done um, a lot myself in my own practice. I know it works really well. Got a spider now. <laughs> Very squished spider. You'll be a part of the pot. Be interested in the reduction, might not it? <laughs> do, you ever, do you ever turn uh, big pots? What do you mean by turn? You know, sort of cut by. On the wheel? Yeah. Well, it depends. There's different ways, but you know, like the way Ray constructs his work? Yeah. Um, he, he, he does coiling on the wheel. So he coils and throws, and then he, he'll turn his work as well. So once you've got your fairly chunky coil, which isn't a coil, we're just going to start to prepare it to join it to the top. So with the flat part of my hand, I'm just starting to create a little chamfer. Now again, this is this is the first one, so it's slightly different because obviously the first coil we're joining to a flat surface. Really, this is really soft, so I don't know how far I'm going to be able to go with this straight away, but we'll give, we'll, we'll give it a go. Now you can see I've made a, a, a chamfer up to a fairly thin edge. There's my 
Oh, there's my knife. Look, it's fell down between the gap in the two So, like normal piling, I'm just going to then join the two pieces together. Because you've got that nice firm base of the sand underneath it, it's actually quite robust. Yeah, well, yeah, it is, yeah, it is. There's a lot of, um, there's a, no, there's a lot of familiarities in uh, baking and, and making vessels. Now, if I would have been, if I'd have been good, I'd have uh, actually worked out how long that that coil was and how much clay I used to create that coil. You can see the important thing here is we've got this chamfer mm -hmm. going this way. Still need to join it on the inside. See, I'm keeping my unprepared clay on a, on a plastic bag. You don't want to be putting your clay that you're not using on a porous surface because we know it dries out a little bit. What I'm trying to do here is if I can see a fat bit in the middle, I'm just pulling pulling the coil a little bit. Come back onto the canvas board. Just using the edge of the board now. It's slightly uh, different this one. When you come to do your next coil, if you turn it over, whoop. Oh, it's going to fall again. Isn't it? You can actually start play doing the the coil, the the overlap angle. Does that make sense? <laughs> 